I want to talk to you today about why the Jews need to leave America. Uh, now let me say this right at the very beginning. I am not anti-Semitic. I do believe that the modern nation of Israel uh, was created by God uh, through some very wicked people. But we're going to see here in the study why God created it and the purpose that God has for it and why the Jews that are in other countries, including here in North America, why they need to go back to Israel before God pushes them back to Israel. Uh, that's the whole thing. If I could go back in time and warn the Jews that were in Germany before the Nazi Holocaust began, if I could go back and warn them and say, go back to, well, there was no nation of Israel, I get that, but you need to get out of Germany before things get bad. Um, I wonder how many would have listened to me. Hopefully you're not one of the foolish ones that doesn't listen to me and doesn't take heed if you are Jewish. You need to understand what the Bible prophesies for the future of the Jewish people. We will be getting into that in this study and not anti-Jewish. Very important to understand that. There are some tremendous blessings from being in the place where God intended you to be. All right, so let's start out here with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you would please give me the right uh, spirit to be able to do this study. Um, Lord, and I do pray that the Jewish people out there, would, those that want the truth, would hear this and take heed to my words. And that if there are any Jews that are lost and that do not know you as their Messiah, as their Savior, I pray that they would at least take heed to what the scriptures say about their need to go back to their land where you will be revealing yourself to them. And um, I just pray, Lord, that you would please help us all to be attentive to your word and, I, and submissive to the word of God. And I pray it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our being those that are saved, born again Christians. Let's go first to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we're going to see what the New Testament says about the Jewish current state of the Jewish people. And um, I know a lot of Jews, they seem to think that uh, the New Testament is anti-Jewish. Well, um, because there's some nasty things that are said about the Jews. Uh, there's a lot of good things said about the Jews as well, which we will be going over in this study. But you have to remember that in the Old Testament, God was, God was a little bit rough on the Jews back then too. Okay? So it's not just the New Testament is against the Jews. Well, the Old Testament says that the Jews did some pretty wicked things, you know, as well. So but let's start out here. First, First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 for this calls also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. You have to believe that this book is God's book. You say, well, I reject the New Testament because I'm a Jew or something. Okay, do you believe that the Old Testament is God's word? If you do, it will work effectually in your life. You'll see blessings that God has there for the Jewish people. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. Uh, does that apply to you if you're not following the word of God? No, it doesn't. The blessing comes upon the children of Israel with the conditional clause there that you have to believe what is written. You have to be living according to the scriptures. And if you're not living according to the scriptures, then God's blessing is not upon you. Just because you are the seed, the physical seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob doesn't give you automatic salvation. Okay, that's very important to understand. Verse 14, For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men. Uh, they please not God. I just have to say this here for a minute. Um, it is very saddening and very sickening to me to see how much the Jews get involved in that's wicked. There are Jews that are in Hollywood that are very wicked people. There are Jews that are in banking that are very wicked people. There are Jews that are in all sorts of different things out there, and it's just wickedness and horrible things. And as a Bible-believing Christian preacher, I try to defend, defend the nation of Israel and then I get these anti-Semitic people and papists and whatever else, replacement theology people, and they come along and they are attacking the Jews. And then, you know, I, they say, what about this? What about that? And I said, well, yeah, it's wicked. Well, then they can't be God's people. You please not God with what you're doing. 
It's so amazing to me. I've seen so many times that the Orthodox Jews especially, they'll, they'll talk about Gentile dogs. I was in New York the one time many years ago as a young, uh, I'd say preteen boy or whatever. And, and I remember going and there were Orthodox Jews in the grocery store and they wouldn't even look at you. They wouldn't even make eye contact. And yet you came here to America founded by Japhetic men, sons of Japheth, Japheth the elder, you know, uh, God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. And we come here to the indigenous Native American people, and we dwell here because we want religious freedom. And then the Jews followed us over, and then they treat us like we're dogs. Uh, the Bible doesn't say God shall enlarge Shem. Okay, it's God shall enlarge Japheth. So if we're such dogs and everything else, don't come here and try to emulate us. Don't try, come here and try to get us into a debt system. All right, where you mess with us. See, that's wickedness. That's wrong. You do what the, New or the Old Testament says that you're supposed to do. Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. You better be involved in, in religion, not trying to get into all the banking and stuff that Japheth does. But they please not God, and they're contrary to all men. There is no other group of people out there that are so contrary as some of the Jews that are out there. I mean, there's, there's Jews that I've met, and they're very nice people and everything. Saved Jews, I've met a few. Um, very nice people, absolutely. But there's some of the Jews, oh boy, are they contrary to all men. It's terrible. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins always, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. God's wrath is coming upon the nation of Israel. I mean, it's just such a simple, there are some things in Scripture, brethren, that there's no real debate about. You can get into the, into the it takes you into other things and it gets, you know, you have to debate this and debate that. But there are a few things that are just clear as crystal. The time of Jacob's trouble that's yet to come, all right, Israel needs to be reborn as a nation. When the New Testament was written, Israel was not its own nation with its own laws speaking Hebrew, okay? Uh, they were under Roman occupation. All right, uh, the end times have not happened yet. Revelation didn't happen in the first century. I still get that in the comments and I'm still going to delete you and whatever else because you're a heretic. That's ridiculous to say that all the events of Revelation happened in the first century. Nonsense, absolute nonsense. The wrath is coming upon the Jews. You study all the stuff that the Jews are involved in, all the evil and all the horrible things. Yeah, God's wrath is coming upon them. They're filling up their sins always. Before the Lord, they're just, hey, you know, what else can I get involved in? And the Roman Catholic Church says, hey, you want to be a, a papal knight? Well, then here, go do this dastardly thing. Go do that dastardly thing. And the Jews say, oh, yeah, how much money's in it? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah, we'll do it. And the Jews have gotten involved in some very evil things because of their partnership with Rome. And it's interesting because you get into the Gospels and um, Pilate comes and he says, should I crucify your king? And what did the Jews say? We have no king but Caesar. And they've been in bed with Rome ever since then. Some will try to fight. Some will try to say, no, we're not doing what the Catholic Church says. But for the most part, the Jews are in bed with the Roman Catholic Church. They are, if you know anything at all. Now let's go back to Ezekiel. Back to the book of Ezekiel. When you read the book of Revelation... There's a lot of things that go on around the holy city. And that's not the Vatican. And it sure isn't Washington, D.C. <laughs> um, the holy city is Jerusalem. That's what it's listed as, as the city of the great king. That's the center of Bible prophecy. Why? Because it's about the Jews. It's the time of Jacob. Jacob being Israel. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy holy people and upon thy holy city. Daniel chapter 9. It's about the Jews. The Jews have rejected Jesus Christ. The church has not rejected Jesus Christ. The end times are about the Jews. When the body of Christ, when the Lord says, okay, that's enough, come up hither. He pulls up the body of Christ, pulls away that restraint of the body of Christ being there with the Holy Spirit indwelling us. We leave, and then God says, I'm going to start dealing with the Jews again. That's Scripture. So you get into all the pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, pre-wrath, all this other. It doesn't matter. Who is it for? It's for the Jews. It's for the people of Israel. 
the nation of Israel because they rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah. That's what it's about. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ doesn't need to be revealed to me. I met him years ago. I talk to him every day. Okay? If you're a Jew that has rejected your Messiah, then you need to have Jesus revealed to you. It's just so simple. And I still get these devils in the comments. Oh, you need to study it more. You need to study it. No, no. You need to get saved. All right? Or just drop your very foolish pride and realize, I have done the study. I have done the research. I have put out lots of sermons on this issue. Okay, there are no arguments that posties can come up with that I haven't already answered. But then they come and they say, oh, you know, you need to debate me in the comment section. I'm not debating you in the comment section. Well, you need to come back and forth. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I've already spent all the time putting the scriptures together, preaching for hours and hours, hundreds of hours since this ministry began, back many years ago. 2007 officially began. 2008, I started out on YouTube. But I'm supposed to just, you know, keep going and saying the same things over again and writing it out in the comments. No, I'm not going to do it. Quite frankly, if you don't care enough about the scriptures to study this stuff, through going through my videos and seeing the scriptures that I presented, then I have no time to waste on you. I might give you a little short thing or something in the comments, but that's about it. And I still get these people, they write these huge things in the comments, answer all my points. I can't. I can't. I don't have time. It's not that I can't from the scriptures. I can. I could waste all my time. But that's what you little servants of the devil are all about. Get me away from the ministry so I waste all my time arguing with people in the comments. No, I've learned a long time ago that they're just there, here to waste my time. But uh, as far as the Jews are concerned, you have to understand it isn't, hey, this white guy here, and I am Japhetic, purely 100% Japhetic. I have a video about that. I'm not a Jew. A lot of people think I look Jewish or something. I'm not Jewish. There's no Jewish blood in me. Okay, um, none whatsoever. Uh, don't hate the Jews or whatever else. But what I'm saying is, you have to understand, it's not just some white guy telling that hates the Jews and I'm a Nazi or something like this, and I'm saying, get out of America. We don't want you here. No, what I'm saying is, I'm going to give you a head start. Before the Lord makes it so bad here in America that you're going to want to leave. All right? And those of you who still refuse, you're going to end up in death camps, just like they did in Nazi Germany. I'm not going to be founding those death camps. I won't be running those death camps. I won't be working at those death camps. But I'm telling you, they're coming. The alt-right, traditional Catholic, fascist Nazi system is going to come to power here in America. Again, if you don't understand what happened after World War II, we brought the Nazi scientists here. Werner von Braun being one of the most well-known. Worked for NASA. Nazi scientist. We have the fasci there in the halls of Congress. There's fascism here. I just found out today, I was watching a documentary, and they were talking about how that during the Vietnam War, Lyndon Baines Johnson called up Francisco Franco, who survived, you know, the Nazi regime, the fascist regime, even though he had troops working with the Nazis. Yeah, and the Nazis helped him out with his little civil war thing over there in Spain. And he actually uh, helped American, the American military, Francisco Franco, still alive when Viet the Vietnam War was being fought, and he had a medical corps, 30 men sent to Vietnam to help fix up American soldiers dressed in American military uniforms. Just like in World War II, the Spanish troops of Francisco Franco were dressed in Wehrmacht, Nazi uniforms. They had a little Spanish patch there on their shoulder to show what they were. Yellow and red little patch right there. Yeah, you can check it out. Check out what I'm saying. It's exactly right. It's that bad. America is the secret Nazi empire. Went from Germany, they moved the operation to America. And in the future, they're going to move it again. You better get out now. Okay? You can wait. You can call me crazy. I've had Jews do that. They'll say, oh, you know, Jesus, I've been given a spirit of blindness, and we'll see about that here in a little bit, what that's all about. Oh, you know, I, I have to see some things. I can't get saved yet and whatever else. Um... Okay, wait and see what happens. It's going to be bad. But I'm going to show you the good things that come if you return to your land. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 1. This isn't New Testament. 
Okay, so if you reject the New Testament, go here in your Hebrew Old Testament. Also, thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Son of man there, which is a reference to Jesus Christ in the future. Thus saith the Lord God. You know, you could say, well, it's Ezekiel and things here in the context. Yeah, but the Son of Man is going to be coming back. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy hath said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Yeah, it's interesting, a lot of the uh, different parts of Jerusalem are actually deeded to the Vatican. They're ours in possession. They're not the Jews, in other words. They don't belong to the Jews, even though God gave them to the children of Israel. Verse 3, Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers, and are an infamy of the people. Contrary to all men, and they please not God. Hmm. Lines up with the New Testament very well, doesn't it? Yeah. Therefore ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which pray, become a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumea, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey." Prophesy therefore concerning that land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Oh, the, the Gentiles are just a bunch of dogs, yet ye dress like us. Ye eat a lot of our food. You come and you like our technologies and all this other stuff. You have borne the shame of the heathen. You're going to get into Hollywood movies and things like this and hide your Jewish ancestry and whatever else and act just like the heathen. Shame on you, Jews. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel. For they are at hand to come. They're at hand to come. God's going to bring you back. We're going to see that as we go through this chapter. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown. And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it. And the cities shall be inhabited, and the wastes shall be builded. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. God wants to prosper you from coming back to the land. It's not going to be a bad thing. He wants to say, He's saying, Come back, I'm going to prosper you. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. Thus saith the Lord God, because they say unto you, Thou land devourest up men, and hast bereaved thy nations. Therefore thou shalt devour men no more, neither bereave thy nations any more, saith the Lord God. Neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the heathen any more, neither shall, shalt thou bear the reproach of the people any more, neither shalt thou cause thy nations to fall any more, saith the Lord God. God's going to do some good things in that land. You better get over there. See, that's what I'm saying. Verse 16, let's continue. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Wherefore, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. Yeah, modern-day Israel definitely polluted their land with idols. And ancient Israel, too. That's why God forsook them and said, Okay, you're going to be scattered. Verse 19, And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries. According to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. And when they entered in unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name when they said to them, 
These are the people of the Lord, and are gone forth out of his land. But I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. Okay, let me just stop right there for a minute. Now, this is one of the big things that the replacement theology people and a bunch of other heretics will come out with. They'll say, well, the people in Israel right now, they can't be the true Jews. They can't be the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, because they came back in unbelief. Isn't that what the text is saying right here in Ezekiel 36? They say, well, yeah, but you see, that's, that was hap it, it occurred in the past. All the prophecies for Israel, they already occurred in the past. That's nonsense. When were they ever scattered among, scattered among all nations? That didn't happen in the first century or in the B.C. years leading up to the first century. It didn't happen. So what are we reading here? We're reading about right now. The Jews are scattered throughout all the different nations out there. And God says, I'm going to bring you back to your land, not because you're a holy, righteous people, but for my name's sake. I am not a liar. God cannot lie. I'm not a liar, so I'm going to bring my people Israel back to the land. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Uh, verse 25, we'll go there next. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments, and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God." I will also save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree, and the increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. All right? So, you say, oh, wow. So, that if we go back, then we get all that good stuff. Well, after the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, there's going to be that time there where the Lord's going to have to purify. The Lord's going to reveal Jesus Christ to you as the nation of Israel. But after that whole time happens, that's when the new covenant comes in. A lot of theologians make this terrible blunder. They say, well, the, the new co covenant and the New Testament are synonymous. It's the same thing. No, it isn't. The New Testament came in with the death of the testator, Hebrews chapter 9. The new covenant does not come in until Jesus Christ returns. See, that's what gets a lot of people. They say, well, the, the Messiah, you know, he would have to come and bring everything all at once. That's not true. Jesus brought in a new testament. Of his blood he died on the cross he was buried he rose again at the third day according to the scriptures he said what he was going to do and he did it the first part the new testament the new covenant on the other hand comes in later at the second coming that's where all these jews get all mixed up they try to say new testament's new covenant no it isn't that's what the christian scholars a lot of them do new testament's new covenant no it is not and you have to get that thing or you'll get it all mixed up. Rightly divide the word of truth, you know. Verse 31. Then shall you remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord God, be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Right now you need to be ashamed of what you're doing. Thus saith the Lord God, In the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the wastes shall be builded. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, This land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places, and plant that with that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. Do you believe that? Do you believe it when the Lord says, I will do it? He doesn't say, I might do it. I'll think about it. Give me some time. I'll get back. I will do it. 
Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel, to do it for them, I will increase them with men like a flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feasts. So shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. You say, wait a second here. So we're in the New Testament right now. Yes, you got that correct. But we're not in the New Covenant. The New Covenant didn't get here. It won't come until the second coming. That is correct. And between that is the time of Jacob's trouble, right? Yes, exactly. Well, then you're saying to go back to Israel and there's going to be a lot of bad things that happen there. Yes, that's correct. You say, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, absolutely it does because you see, the bad things that happen in Jerusalem are going to be mild compared to what happens in America. America is going to be far worse. So if you're Jewish, um, you might want to get over there where there's actually a future written for you. A future of tremendous promises and blessings. Go on over there to Israel. You have a much better chance of surviving there than you do here. Um, unless you want a country that's completely destroyed, I believe, by the time of Jacob's trouble, when, by the time it gets started. But um, I heard a statistic years ago, actually, and I, and I don't even know what the numbers are at right now, but I remember hearing that they said that America has as many Jews in it as were there in Germany, I guess, uh, before the Holocaust happened. And I thought, boy, is that a very... Uh, a statement that foretells the future of where this nation's going. And I've been warning about this for years, by the way. This isn't some new thing. It just the Lord just revealed it to me. No, the Lord just kind of nudged me again and said, you know, as we're studying uh, finance and we're getting into all this st things of bankers and whatever, and we just keep running into Jew after Jew after Jew. And I just keep thinking, oh, Lord, your people are so wicked. And we're going through the Old Testament and just seeing the thing of, you know, Solomon built the house of the Lord and then he's bringing in the daughter, Pharaoh's daughter, you know, an outlandish woman, and he's and she's coming with her false gods, and he starts to have his heart turn away. And just, oh, Lord, these people. <laughs> uh, the Lord, you know why I believe the Lord uh, chose the nation of Israel? Just to show that God can save anybody out there because he chose the most contrary bunch of wicked people that ever walked this earth. <laughs> just to be frank with you. And I love you if you're Jewish. Don't get mad at me and whatever else. And you just said you're contrary and more wicked than anybody else. Yeah, I did. But I still love you. I still like to see Jews get saved. And I hope that some Jews listen to what I'm saying and go back to Israel. I really do. I want you to be blessed. I want you to make it through. And your best chance to make it through is over there. Okay? Not here in America. Head back to Israel. Take my advice. Okay? So I guess I shouldn't be going this way. It's that's west. It should be that way. All right. Uh, kind of southeast that way, I guess. Um, from where I'm at, if I was to point at Israel. Now let's go to the New Testament, Romans chapter 11. So we saw what the Old Testament has to say about the Jews and the fact that they need to go back to Israel. But now we're going to see what the New Testament has to say. You know I just have to say something too. I forgot to make a mention of this, but I, I need to say this. Romans chapter 11, you can turn there. Um, and by the way, you know, I know I get new Christians and they say, man, you have to slow it down and things. Well, that's what you hit the pause button for. Um, I know I can rattle off a little bit fast, but I'm trying to get a lot of scripture in there and whatever. Um, <clears throat> just pause it, turn to the place. If you have to go to the table of contents in the front of your Bible, do that. Come get to the book of Romans chapter 11 and then unpause it. But uh, I just want to say one of the, again, there's, I've gotten into all the little intricate debates about the timing of the resurrection and the Bible version issue and all the different manuscript evidence stuff and all the different things and creation versus evolution and Roman Catholicism. But, you know, you get right down to what the Bible teaches. It's actually just very simple, very logical. You don't have to get into all the real intricate things and study the enemy's resources and watch their videos and whatever. I mean, that's my job. I'm a preacher. That's what I do. But for believers out there, just learn some key things from the scriptures and it makes it really simple. Okay? Um, there are people out there, crazy people, that believe that the church of Jesus Christ has replaced Israel. Okay? And they always have to spiritualize certain things because, you, you know, the, the Lord's going to... the the nation of Israel scattered, and in the end times, he brings them back to their land. Okay, if the church has replaced the nation of Israel, 
Uh, how is the church scattered? You say, well, there are just believers everywhere. Okay, then we're being, going to be brought back to Jerusalem, to Israel, land of Israel. Why? You know, it doesn't make any sense. You say, but, but I believe that that's going to happen. The church of Jesus Christ, the, the true new Israel, we're going to be brought back to the land. Okay, then now what do you do there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16, I think it was, where it says about that they're the Jews there, that they are contrary to all men and they please not God. Well, if the church has replaced Israel, then that would make you contrary to all men and that you please not God. Just read the New Testament, you know. We're not the new Israel. We're not the new Jews. All right, the church is different. And there's a whole lot of other things we could say on that too. If you can think of any other verses that uh, are just a simple kind of a, well, yeah, we're not the Jews, and put them in the comments section below for others to read. Um, but let's go to Romans chapter 11 now. We'll read what God says about the Jews in the New Testament and his future plans for them. We know from the Old Testament, Ezekiel 36, that they're brought back in unbelief. But does that line up with the New Testament? Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. <laughs> I remember Stephen Andersnake the one time, Anderson, uh, he was a little new IFB Baptist preacher, and, and he'd come out and he said, you know, God's cast away the Jews. God doesn't even recognize Jews anymore in the, in the New Testament. There's not one verse that talks about any of the tribes in the New Testament. Something to that effect. Um... Romans chapter 11, verse 1. Can you read? Verse 2. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. Watch ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession, intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. Okay? And I want to say this too. Gene Kim, another false Baptist uh, hireling of the devil, and he came out and he said, God has cast away his people. God cast away the nation of Israel. Just right there, just denying scripture. I have the video on my channel. You can watch it. Okay, but you see this thing. There you have Elias. Greek coming into English. The Hebrew into English would be Elijah. Um, but it's Elijah that it's talking about there. And he says, you know, I'm left alone. There isn't anybody else out there. That's what's going on. Verse 4. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. There is a remnant of Jews that are saved. As I've said, I've met a few. I've met a few Jews that were saved. It's a great thing. Verse 6, And if by grace, then it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. In other words, they're not saved. They're not Jews in terms of they're just Old Testament Jews and they, they, they're Torah observant, you know, and, they, and they're and they there and, you know, uh, they keep all the Old Testament. No, God saved them by grace. By grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. We're not saved by works, okay? So the Jews, it isn't re a reference here in Romans 11 to Jews that are under the Torah and they're still keeping their whole, you know, Jewish faith and whatever else and that they're saved that way. Uh, you, can maintain, you can maintain some aspects of Judaism that are not contrary to the scriptures, but uh, you're going to have to come out and, and say, I believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And you're going to get in a lot of trouble for doing that. You say, well, that's why I'm not doing it because I'd have to, my family would turn against me. Uh, you mean like the Gentiles, like myself, have had to go through? See, oh, you don't understand, though. I mean, they would shun me. They would you know, do all kinds of stuff and, and threaten me and everything else. Uh, yeah, kind of like me. Oh, but no, no, you don't understand because, see, they would actually try to kill me. Oh, uh, yeah, that's happened, too. Uh, physically poisoned by relatives. My wife and I and my son. Um, yeah. So don't uh, say, well, you know, I'll get saved later on because uh, as Jews, we go through a lot worse things than the Gentiles. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Anybody that's going to come to Jesus Christ for salvation, you will suffer persecution. You will suffer tribulation. Just the way it is. 
It's my dog over there, so he's barking at a squirrel, I'm sure. All right. Verse 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. Well, see, it's they're, they're elected to be blinded. That's not what it's saying. What it's saying there is that if they reject Jesus Christ, then God says, okay, then you're going to be blinded. I'll reveal Jesus Christ later on to you. The Jews require a sign, but the Greeks seek after wisdom. You see? The Jews that are saying, we require a sign. Master, we would see a sign of thee. And Jesus turns and he says, there shall no sign this adulterous and, wick and sinful generation. I'm not going to give you a sign. I'm paraphrasing here. But the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the, in the whale's belly, the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. You were given a sign with Jesus Christ. And the signs stop and they go the whole way till the time of Jacob's trouble when the revelation of Jesus Christ comes and he brings the new covenant at the end of it. That's what the purpose of the New Testament is and everything that's being written here. <clears throat> Verse 9, And David saith, Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back away. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? So God's just done with them, right? No. God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Hey, you know what? Right now, I, have, I am bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth me from all sin, all unrighteousness. I am guaranteed, I am sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of redemption. I'm going to go to heaven when I die. And if you're a Jew out there and you've rejected Jesus Christ, you're on your way to hell. So well, that doesn't make any sense. Most of that New or that Bible you're holding in your hand, most of it is Old Testament. And the New Testament was all written by Jews. The whole book was written by Jews. Who do you think you are? Oh, I don't know. A Gentile that's born again, that's here to provoke you to jealousy. I have something that you don't. And then all your little scheming with your Masonic fraternal stuff and Bilderbergers and all the other things that the Jews get messing around with with these papists, all that little scheming can't buy you what I have, what I have been given freely by the Lord. The Holy Spirit of God is within me. That's why I can see the future and you people have no clue as to what's coming relying on your seers and all your other little stuff and things going out there to Fort Antonia, the wall there, the Roman fort, the ruins of the Roman fort. And you're out there putting little prayers in between the rocks and, and, you know, doing your little repetitious prayers like a good Catholic would do. Holy Mary, full of grace, blessed be the fruit of the womb. And <laughs> Why don't you get some rosaries there, Jews? Probably look good with your little curls there and things like that. All your little traditions of men that you've gotten, that you've added to the scriptures. Rabbinical traditions and all the other garbage. Paul called it dung. I'm trying to be a little bit nicer than the Apostle Paul, you see. He called it dung. I'll just say garbage. We'll leave it at that. Verse 12. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness... Exactly what I'm trying to say. Get out of America so that you can go and achieve your fullness over there in Israel. I don't hate you. I don't hate Jews. I'll speak to you like a man. I'm not going to sugarcoat things. But get over to where the promises are. Get over to the promised land. That's where the good stuff is going to happen. Your fullness is coming. It's going to be happening in the future. Get serious about things. You know, don't keep stacking up all these false riches, the fiat currencies and all the stock market stuff and whatever else that the Jews get to messing with. Don't get all that stuff, all, all the Rothschilds. Oh, look at our mansions. They're going to be junk in the future. They won't mean anything. All the scheming and everything else you guys get involved in. How foolish. For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. This is written to me. 
if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. All through his ministry, Paul, he was constantly going out of his way, trying to get to the Jews. Suffering, continual suffering and sorrow and everything for his kinsmen, his brethren after the flesh. He had a desire to see those Jewish people get saved, just as any born-again Christian will. I'm trying to warn you before the Nazi Holocaust happens again here in America. I'm telling you, it's coming. All these white people out there that have been just had their finances destroyed by your scheming in the bank system, the mortgage abuse and all the other debts and loans and everything else, and now they're just watching everything crumble around them. Heard a statistic that uh, in 2021, I think it was, the American people had $2.2 trillion in savings. That number today is $1.5 billion. You say, oh, 2.2 2 to 1.5, that's not too bad. No, no, 2.2 trillion with a T, down to 1.5 billion with a B. That is a huge drop in savings. I'm just watching people. I can see the people. They're driving around in their trucks and their cars and everything else yet, trying to maintain their looks. And you see them at the grocery store, they barely have any food in the, grocery, in the shopping cart. And when it gets blamed on you as the Jews, don't tell me for one second that there are going, going to be people that are going to try to hide you. People are going to be saying, there's a Jew, get him, take him to the camps. Right here in the good old U.S. of A., that's why I'm making this study to warn you and say, get back there. See, but you'll lose the blessing of the Jews. The Jews, once they're kicked out of America, they'll, they'll be leaving and you'll lose the blessing. What blessing? They weren't told to come here by God. They weren't. Um, they came here and the uh, prosperity that we've seen in America in the 20th century, the rich middle class, um, it was based on debt, brethren. It's fake. It's false. You have to come to that realization. That was not some kind of a blessing of God. The prosperity of the 20th century was debt. It was done to rob you slowly of your wealth. Now the average American doesn't even have $400 for an emergency. And that's the blessing of God? No, it's not. Verse 15, For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree wert graft in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee." Okay, Jesus Christ is the one there. He's the foundation. And so he's saying, I have promises to the Jews. There are certain promises and things. And again, you say, well, you're, you're anti-Semitic. You're going against the nation of Israel. No, I'm not going against the nation of Israel. I'm going against Jews that are outside of the nation of Israel and need to go back to their nation. Please understand that. I would, If I was made the dictator of America, I couldn't be president because they don't have enough power. I'd have to be made dictator to set things right in this country. Uh, <laughs> Never going to happen, I realize, but you know, I can dream. Um, but if I was made the dictator of this country, I would have complete diplomatic ties with Israel and I would send the Jews back there. Round up the Jews, get them out of here. I wouldn't put them in death camps, but I'd say, go back to your nation. And when you get there, you're going to be our greatest ally. I'm going to give more things to the nation of Israel than any other nation out there. That's what I would do. I would bless, bless the nation of Israel. But when God's word prophesies that the Jews are supposed to go back to their land and they're not going back to their land because you're making it nice for them to stay here, how are you going to get God's blessing? You're going against, against Bible prophecy. See, it doesn't make any sense. We should want the Jews, we should pray for the Jews to go back to Israel and not make it comfortable for them here. And you know, by the way, uh, you say, well, it's been pretty good here. I, yeah, because there were a lot of Protestants in this nation. But the Catholics are coming to power. The Catholics are getting more and more powerful all the time. The Jesuits are gaining in power. And I'm losing power. Protestant preachers are losing power. So guess what? We won't be able to protect you when the Roman Catholics come to open power in this nation. 
we're going to have our own fight against them. We won't be able to fight and protect the Jewish people. You better think about that. Verse 19, Thou wilt say, Then the branches were broken off, that I might be graft in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest, standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. This nation is going to be cut off from God's blessings. Verse 23, and they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be graft in. For God is able to graft them in again. You can get saved. You don't have to say, I'm a blinded Jew, I can't get saved. No, you can still get saved. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. The fullness of the Gentiles. God is going to let the Gentiles just get away with all kinds of stuff, and you think, what are you doing, God? I don't understand this. The fullness of the Gentiles has to come in. Oh, let the Gentiles just make a complete, total mess of things. Uh, be not partakers with them, okay? Come out from among them and be separate. Touch not the unclean thing. Don't yoke up with the Gentiles and try to get into a little banking and little scheming. And how can we make it? We have to raise the interest rates so that the inflation stays down. But yet fuel prices are going to go up, which makes inflation go up. And then we'll have to raise interest rates. But that destroys the mortgage market and the auto loan industry. And, and you know, all these little schemings, all little stuff that the, that the Gentiles do. Well, but if we can bring in, if we can make a hyperinflationary event, then we could bring in the central bank digital currencies. Yeah, but what are we going to do about crime on the increase? And, oh, yeah, okay. Um, well, maybe if we could send out some more stimulus checks. Yeah, but that makes the problem uh, worse because we're going into more national debt and we're, we're going to have to raise the debt ceiling again. And, you know, we're up over $33 trillion now as a national debt. And um, uh, yeah. Fullness of the Gentiles. They're fools. <laughs> I know it's not fullness, F-O-O-L, you know, it's F-U-L-L, -L, but uh, the fullness of the Gentiles, we're just going to make sin just completely, just complete it from one end to the other, you know, going to be do our very best, and the Lord's going to say, okay, you've really made a mess of things there, stupid Gentiles, now I'm going to come down and fix things. And when the Lord comes down to fix things, it's going to be very bad for the Gentile nations. He's going to make a full end of all nations, whether he's scattered the Jews. That's why you want to go back to Israel. You see? Verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. What we read over in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36. I will create in you a clean heart. I will take away the sin. I will do all... That's what's going on here. Has that happened yet? Well, perhaps if you're a little bit... Uh, your elevator doesn't go the whole way to the top floor, or your little... Uh, you have the IQ of a rock or something. Well, yes, it already happened. Uh, no, it didn't. God didn't take away the sins of the nation of Israel. You go over there, you'll find plenty of sin. Okay? He didn't take it away. It's not something that already happened in the first century. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. That's not God the Father. That's uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God made a special covenant, the Abrahamic covenant. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out! For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? 
For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. He's got it all worked out. You say, well, I don't believe in the New Testament. Then go to the Old Testament. You can still see that you have to go back to your land. You can still see that there's going to be a blessing over there in Israel. That way. Let me do it this way. Over there. Head east. Head over to Israel. Get there. Quickly. Well, I, I think I'm just going to wait. I don't think that you have a whole lot, you know, to say there, whatever, dumb Gentile, you and your dog, you know. Okay. All right. Well, then uh, I'm going to tell you what to keep an eye out for. Keep an eye out for a political leader that will come on the scene and they'll start to talk about uh, the Catholic Church and our friends, the Catholic Church. And don't speak against the Catholic Church. And we are going to end anti-Catholic bias, like Trump said. Um, and you look at these... Uh, men that are running for political office, and look and see what their connections are to the Jesuit order. You know, the order that said that they would bring all people back under the authority of the Roman Catholic Church, the one that would go out and do the counter-reformation. Yeah, that one. Oh, the uh, one that uh, has the current Pope, Pope Francis, a trained Jesuit. Most of, uh, a lot of our politicians trained Jesuits. And if you see them getting more powerful, then you know that the uh, Nazi movement is coming. And uh, look at the Jesuits that were involved in the Nazi party, by the way. Um, but, you know, hey, you want to be here for the death camps? The uh, gassing of lots of people and whatever, Lord only knows what they have planned for this time. Well, okay. That's between you and God. Um, but if you're smart, you'll start to say, you know, being a Jew, uh, Old Testament and New Testament both say I should be in one place. It's a geographic location. The nation of Israel. The land of Israel. God is going to bless that place. It's going to be bad over there for a while. But you'll be a lot safer there than you will be here. Um, and I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of it, to be very honest with you. I'm getting a little sick and tired of seeing now the Pope comes out with this new council this thing about the capitalism and whatever else and uh who's he standing there and who's he got standing beside him oh i don't know a Roth, rothschild a female there a woman i forget what her name is um you can look it up i won't bother putting the pictures in here and everything do your own due diligence you know check out what i'm saying but brand new thing he just came out with not long ago and there's a rothschild right there Oh, wealthy Jewish, you know, woman here, high society. And you don't belong in that. You belong in Israel. You should be reading the Bible, searching the scriptures. But you want to be entangled in all the affairs and everything else and the Astor family and, and this rich Jew and the Rothschilds and, and all of these things. Oh, look, we're high society and we'll mingle with the Catholics and we'll work together and things and we'll become papal Jewish intelligence agents and papal Jewish bankers and papal Jewish Hollywood stars. Um, and we'll just mingle and intermarry with the Catholics and everything else. The wrath of God is coming upon you to the uttermost. It is. So, I will keep warning the Jewish people, but the day will come when my warnings are uh, no longer going to seem just as idle talk. When you'll actually see the physical manifestation of what I've been trying to tell you. But then it'll be too late. So I pray that you take heed to what I have said in this study. Listen, study, look for yourself into what I'm saying. And um, you say, well, the God, God will still, he'll bless the Jews in other lands. Um, how's God uh, blessing the land of Israel, uh, not Israel, but the, the land of uh, Ukraine with the Jewish uh, Zelensky over there? Getting his, uh, the young men of that nation slaughtered, over 400,000 dead. Ukrainian soldiers. That's a lot of dead men. Why? Because they have an out-of-bounds Jew trying to run things when he shouldn't be there. Put in place by the uh, U.S. intelligence 
agencies and things. Better get back to your land. You better try to stop uh, or stop trying to act like white people, Japhetic people. That is going to be it. I thank you very much for watching, for considering what the scriptures say. And we will see you in the next study.